patients with severe coronavirus infections who presented with enlarged right ventricles of the heart were most likely to die from the disease based on data from a new study. A team from the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai looked at health records of more than 100 COVID-19 patients hospitalized at Mount Sinai Morningside in New York City between March 26th and April 22nd. 31 percent had dilation of the right ventricle. 41 percent died by the end of the study period, compared to 11 percent of those whose right ventricles weren't enlarged. The study, which has been accepted for publication in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, says right ventricle enlargement was the only variable significantly associated with mortality in this group of COVID-19 patients. The reason behind the new findings remains unknown. Enlargement of the right ventricle can be caused by obstruction of blood flow in the lungs due to blood clots or lung tissue damage, according to the new study's authors. They say direct damage to heart tissue by the coronavirus may also be a contributing factor. Now, uh, one of the things I encountered was people come up to me and saying lots of nice things, but also, hey, you don't need a mask. You got the antibodies. Uh, everybody's talking about antibody tests and the hope to yep. have them. I saw all these people who were so upset who said, you know, I had the antibodies and then I got retested and I don't have them anymore. Am I going to get sick? Mm -hmm. What do we know about these tests, their reliability and what they say about where we want to be going forward? Yeah, I, I think it's hard to, to place a lot of faith in the test right now, and it's for a couple of reasons. First of all, I will say that someone like you who's, who's gone through this, you have probably have antibodies. I mean, the test may find them sometimes, may not other times. You probably have them, and they probably give you some degree of protection. We don't know how long, how strong. We got to figure that out. As far as the tests go themselves, there's two points. One is that there are a lot of tests that got put out in the market, 60, 70 tests that just weren't validated, probably not very good tests. There was this rush to get tests out there. Uh, now they're dialing that back and trying to go back and validate some of these tests. But there's a more nuanced issue, Chris, let's see if I can explain this. In, in, a, in a community where you don't have that, much, uh, uh, that many people who have antibodies, you have five to 10% of people have antibodies, they're harder to find. Mm. So as a result, you sort of power up your tests to find them and you lose what's called your positive predictive value. It's a statistics term, but basically means you run the risk now of getting lots of false positives, which is the worst case scenario. You don't wanna tell people they have the antibodies and they don't because then they'll have this false sense of security, even though they shouldn't. As you get more people who are exposed, take healthcare workers, for example, in New York, that's gonna be a larger population of people exposed. The test actually, the, the accuracy, the, the reliability, if you will, of the test goes up. Uh, so as you have more people exposed to this virus, the idea that you're going to correctly identify those who have antibodies, that the likelihood will go up. We're not there yet at this point. So someone like you, you know, you're sort of stuck in limbo. You know you have antibodies. You don't know how protective they are. A lot of people are going and getting tested right now. They're not going to get a test result that's going to give them confidence, you know, and stuff. And they're going to still wonder, did I have it? Did I not have it? By now, all 50 states have reopened to some degree. And while experts are warning moving too fast could accelerate the COVID-19 pandemic, many are wondering if it's even safe to visit businesses. Remember to wear a mask, frequently wash or sanitize your hands at any surface you touch, and stay six feet apart from others. Here are a few other tips. One, don't go out like a normal day going from place to place. Limit your outings to one business. Two, if you want to dine in at a restaurant, try and eat outside. The virus circulates more in enclosed spaces. Make sure you're six feet from other tables and wash your hands before and after eating. Three, when headed to a beach or park, read up on the current guidelines and restrictions. Some places will only let you be there if you keep moving. And if it's crowded, find someplace else. Four, feel like you need to get a good sweat on at the gym? First, make sure you are far away from others. Wipe down every machine or piece of equipment before and after you use it. Five, want to get a haircut or a pedicure? While it's impossible to social distance with employees at places like this, there are some things you can do. Read their safety protocols to ensure they are taking every step to eliminate risks.
It's all about social distancing now, and embed tech in Waukesha is on the cutting edge. On Friday, I was talking to the New York Metropolitan Transportation Authority, and while I was talking to them, the U.S. Navy called. They're interested in embed tech's prototype for a wearable social distancing monitor, the para range. We're putting in uh, an alert so it'll vibrate when you're within six feet of another uh, person. This technology is accurate within an inch to two inches. But this could help train behavior too, right? Like I didn't realize that was that close, right? Absolutely, I mean, and people know that um, they're being monitored. So if all of a sudden the rules are, hey, do not get within six feet with somebody, and all of a sudden, um, you know, the, the, the data sheet shows that, that every five minutes you've went and talked to every single person, you got within three feet of everybody in the, in the building, that puts everybody at risk. As valuable as that social distancing alarm element is, Embed Tech says it's the contact tracing part that could prove even more important. It will just keep a record going, and then if there's a, an issue, someone's ill, they're able to pull that device and, and pull the tracking uh, of what contacts you know, they had. The device could also possibly be embedded in college IDs, helping contain any COVID-19 cases on campus. So this can be one piece of that puzzle. They could know with whom that student had engaged with or been close to in the last 10 days or whatever period they want to look at. A possibly critically important tool in controlling the coronavirus spread.